The rain threat in far north Queensland may have eased, but some communities remain cut off by floodwaters, with essentials running low. There have been dramatic rescues as people were plucked from trees and the roof of a pub by locals. And late today, the Defence Force evacuated an entire town. Thousands of people still don't have power. We have reporters in the region tonight from the northern beaches of Cairns down to Innisfail. Christy Sexton-McGrath begins our coverage. As the floodwater recedes, stories of survival and bravery are emerging. In Rossville, north of Cairns... James, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, so good. Rumours of people trapped in trees and on the roof of a pub reached Gavin Deer. Yeah, we got you. We got you. This man found exhausted and shivering but alive. OK, we got you, mate. Can you get down? Yeah. Just when we were starting the motor, we could hear, hear help, help. And um, we got out and we rescued the first fella sitting right up in a tree. This is a, an ocean of water, like un unbelievable stuff. This tiny two-seater mustering chopper did what the Defence Force apparently couldn't, plucking people from the roof of a pub. We're used to cyclones, floods every year, but this flood, mate, it was, it was something to behold. This is the sodden group saved from the lion's den, hotel that is. These are the stories of which every Australian can be proud of the very essence of the Australian character. Army Chinooks were finally able to fly into the indigenous community of Woodjul Woodjul, north of Cairns. There he is. To evacuate some of the town's 300 residents. They've had a traumatic week, some forced to swim through croc waters in the middle of the night. By the end of the evacuation, stricken locals will have been moved to the safety of Cooktown. Healthcare, food, uh, showers at the PCYCs. The northern beaches suburbs of Cairns were smashed at the height of the emergency. Yorkies Knob, 2023. The road in has crumbled, warped and buckled by the water. But the Yorkies Knob Boating Club has power and some food. It's really a blessing. Yeah, it's just like I'm happy that the community is looking out for each other. It's also being used as a makeshift medical clinic. We're doing the best that we can here. It's, it's quite limited. Nearby, the Ezzy family has a heartbreaking task, clearing mud from their home. It was in every cupboard, behind every door and every shelf, everything. They've lost almost everything even the Christmas tree. I think it'll hit me in a few days, but it's all stuck. We're all OK. In the tropical heat, exhausted locals have begun pulling their trashed belongings out onto the street. It's not known exactly how many homes were damaged or destroyed in this flooding event, but what is certain is it's going to take a huge effort to recover. The rain may have eased, but for many, the flood has put life's essentials beyond reach. Christy Sexton-McGrath, ABC News, Yorkies Knob. As the floodwaters recede, the next phase of recovery has begun in remote far north Queensland. Nearly a week since Cyclone Jasper made landfall, supplies are dwindling and access is blocked after major roads were cut. Across the vast Daintree, communities are inundated and isolated. This is catastrophic, the amount of water. Roads all over blocked by landslides and so much debris. Look at that. Residents north of Mossman have been stranded since ex-cyclone Jasper crossed the coast last week. Desperate and fast running out of supplies. We've got pregnant people, we've got elderly people, we've got people that need access to medication within the next few days. In cut off Cape Tribulation, locals are low on food, water and fuel. As a bit of an average across each household, it's averaging seeming to be like about four days uh, per person with food. West of Port Douglas, five families were stranded with no power or reception. Their only exit route washed away. When I spoke to Dad, he sounded quite worried. Jessie cunningham Reed hadn't heard from her parents since Friday. Relief when a stranger on the side of the bridge sent proof of life. They then shouted my brother's number across to them and um, they took a photo and sent it to my brother. The Douglas Shire Mayor says his region is at breaking point. One of the locals from uh, Wonga, they used the term Armageddon 
And, you know, I think that's pretty much going to surmise for a lot of people, you know, what this has been and what this is going to feel like. The resupply efforts into areas like Mossman, Cooktown and our other isolated communities has commenced. Growers on the tablelands have faced fruit and infrastructure damage. We're ranging from 5% up to 30% losses in each. It's going to make a difference to our overall yield. And now transport issues with major routes cut. From a small business point of view, to get stuff up, it's been very hard and very slow. For some residents, it's been close to a week without power. Others in the far north are still yet to have clean running water. Many have said it felt like it took forever for Cyclone Jasper to arrive. But this flood disaster developed overnight and it's taken the region by surprise. The devastation hard to fathom just before Christmas. And Victoria Pengilly joins us from Cairns. Victoria, what's the latest there? Well, Jess, there has been some good news here today in Cairns. The airport has reopened after being closed for a couple of days. There was a mammoth clean-up of the runway, which was largely inundated by floodwaters. Now, the airport has flagged that it is up to individual airlines to resume flights, but it is largely good news for travellers who do have summer holiday plans. Drinking water has also been restored in Cairns, but people are being asked to conserve water supplies while they can and to also avoid polluted floodwaters while they can. Unfortunately, we haven't had much of an update in terms of that 85 year old man who was reported missing from Dagara a couple of days ago. Crews are continuing to search for him and will continue to search into the night. There is also some more good news on the way for tomorrow. A one off payment of $1,000 per adult and $400 per child for people whose homes have been inundated by floodwaters in the Cairns region will be available for tomorrow. So some short term relief in sight, but a very long road ahead for people here in Cairns. Jess? For sure. Victoria Pengilly, thank you. Well, this afternoon, ABC News reached the town of Innisfail, about an hour's drive south of Cairns. As Pat Heaney reports, the floodwaters have subsided, leaving a muddy mess to clean up. This is Jodrell Street in Innisfail. Residents here will tell you they're the first to go under when the Johnston River rises, that they're used to the mud and the smell and the clean-up that follows. But although they braced for Cyclone Jasper, nothing could have prepared them for the torrential rain and flash flooding that followed. Stressful, we thought it was going to get up to the house. Like It came up three times quicker than the last flood and we just, just panicked. We didn't think it would get this high, no. We hoped it would only get to our knees, but it just kept coming up. Yesterday morning at 4.30, this road was clear. Less than 10 minutes later, there was metres of water streaming through these houses. People rushed to get their belongings to higher ground. Washing machines and dryers were taken away with the torrent. Fisherman Darrell Mason used his tinny to do a lap of the block, saving neighbours and a dog before he stopped and watched the water roll in. Some of these poor people here they didn't even have a chance. Eh? People across the road lost cars, neighbours lost cars. It just come that quick, it was just unbelievable. Residents have now begun the mammoth task of cleaning up while they hold out hope that no more rain falls in coming days.